Fantastic. Okay, so as I was introduced, I'm Kari Clark and I'm a research fellow in the Optical Networks Group at University College London. So this talk gives an introduction to clock phase caching, which is an approach I developed with Microsoft Research during my PhD to enable sub nanosecond clock and data recovery in data center optical switches. So the first immediate question is why would one want to use optical switching in the data center? And so if we look at the challenges for future data center design, one of the most significant is that the rate of data exchanged between servers is increasing rapidly, doubling approximately every 12 to 18 months, driven by growth in both consumer and also business demand. Unfortunately, the future scalability of electronic switches that we currently use to interconnect servers within data centers is limited by fundamental physical scalability limitations of silicon transistors. We need an alternative, and a future proof alternative to this is to use optical switches, such as the optical switch shown in the diagram in the right of this slide, which transmit data through momentary direct light paths between top of fact switches rather than requiring data to travel through a deep hierarchy of electronic switches. But optical switches need to handle actual data center traffic. And the question is, what exactly does that look like? To understand this, my collaborators, principally Paolo and Hitesh at Microsoft, analyzed traffic patterns from a production cloud data center. And they found that many of these traces were dominated by small data packets. In this particular traffic pattern, for example, 99.7% of packets were under 576 bytes. Furthermore, over 25% of packets were under 64 bytes. If we put this into perspective, a minimum size Ethernet packet transmits at 25.6 gigabits per second in only 20 nanoseconds. The take home here is that optical switches need to be fast in order to handle small packets efficiently. But in order to do that, optical switches need to configure rapidly. And optical switching technologies exist that can switch in under a nanosecond. But there's another issue too, and that is that receivers need to recover the clock of incoming data before that data can be read. And this process is called clock and data recovery time. For commercial receivers, clock and data recovery time takes at least about 100 nanoseconds. And even with the very best state-of-the-art research prototype, an equivalent of 12.7 nanoseconds at 25.6 gigabits per second is still required to recover that clock. And the key issue here is that because real data center traffic patterns contain many small packets, long clock and data recovery time heavily impacts overall network throughput for an optically switched system. To assess more precisely the impact of clock and data recovery time on optical switch throughput, my collaborators at Microsoft put their real data center traffic pattern through a comprehensive network simulator. With commercial clock recovery circuits with recovery times of over 100 nanoseconds, we found that the throughput of the optical switch is under 20%. And even with the very best traditional state-of-the-art clock recovery circuit, with a clock recovery time of 12.7 nanoseconds at 25.6 gigabits per second, we found that the throughput of an optical switch is reduced to only 58% of what it could potentially be. However, if the clock recovery time is reduced to sub nanoseconds, the optical switch throughput can be increased to 90%, allowing the fuller benefits of optical switches to be realized for the data center. In this particular work, we used a technique that we called clock phase caching to demonstrate sub nanosecond CDR. On the left, you can see an example large scale data center network architecture that could, you, could use this approach to clock and data recovery. It represents a typical large scale data center with up to 10,000 racks of up to 64 servers each. An all optical switch could be used to interconnect all of the top of rack switches within the data center. Then clock phase, clock phase caching at the highest level is then performed in the following manner. Firstly, the transmitters and receivers on all racks are frequency synchronized using distributed synchronization. Secondly, the transmitters and receivers on all racks are synchronized in phase 
which is achieved using the circuitry shown in the right of this slide, which I will now explain in a bit more detail. Clock phase caching principally is an approach that ensures that the clock phase of packets that are arriving at a, at a given receiver are the same irrespective of from whence they have been transmitted, which thereby minimises the complexity of the CDR process. So firstly, this approach relies on clock frequency synchronisation. All nodes connected to the optical switch are synchronised in frequency. That could be done centrally or it could be done in some sort of, of distributed manner. Every transmitter stores a cache of phase values that correspond to every receiver that the transmitter can communicate with through the optical switch. Every transmitter also has a phase interpolator so that it can choose any arbitrary clock phase for packets leaving the transmitter. Every receiver has a clock phase measurement circuit that can measure the clock phase offset between incoming data and the that receiver's own clock. When a packet arrives, whenever a transmitter communicates with a given receiver, the clock phase of outgoing packets is shifted to align with that receiver's clock. And when the packet arrives at the receiver, the clock phase offset between that transmitter to receiver pair is measured. This offset is then communicated back to the transmitter, either through a control plane or through the opposite direction link. This offset is then stored at the transmitter so that it can be then used for subsequent communications with that receiver. And this same process is repeated for all transmitters connected to the optical switch. The temperature in data centres changes with time and this in turn causes changes in fibre time of flight as the fibre gets physically longer and its refractive index changes. This in turn means that the clock phase updates, the correct ones, are changing. So we need to have regular clock phase updates to maintain clock phase synchronisation. And my colleagues at Microsoft and I named this approach clock phase caching. The operational principle of this approach is shown on the right which shows a single clock phase update taking place to compensate for a changing clock phase that has occurred due to slow temperature shift in the data center. The key results of this work were that we demonstrated sub nanosecond CDR locking time in a real time two to one optically switched te test bed. We evaluated the limits of the technique from rate of change of temperature and clock jitter, and we calculated based on our experimental results that the technique is highly scalable with an estimated worst case overhead on optical switch throughput of only 2.2% for 10,000 nodes. We first published this, paper, this work as a post deadline ECOC 2019, which was followed up in 2020 by a high impact publication in Nature Electronics. And although there's not much time in this talk to present all my results, I will present two particularly key results that um, were published in that Nature Electronics paper. To demonstrate clock phase caching, we built a two to one optically switched test bed with a centrally distributed clock and transmitted data, each passing through two kilometer reels of optical fiber, emulating worst case within data center building distance scales. In this first result, we stressed clock phase caching by subjecting the two kilometers of clock and data fiber to a 0.11 degree per second temperature change with a thermally controlled chamber. This rate is over three times the worst case rate of change of temperature that we measured from a production cloud data center of 0.03 degrees C per second. With clock phase caching running at an update rate of 10 hertz, we observed a consistent CDR locking time of 625 picoseconds throughout and no errors recorded. When we repeated the experiment with clock phase caching turned off during the temperature rise, we observed degradation of CDR locking time to more than 40 nanoseconds within a single second. In this second key result, we wanted to explore the long-term stability of clock phase caching. To do that, we allowed the two, top, two by two kilometers of fiber to be subjected to a random environmental temperature fluctuation in our lab for a 48 hour period, which can be seen 
in the plot shown. It also includes a period where the air conditioner was turned off and we saw how our technique coped. And with clock phase caching running, the CDR locking time was under 625 picoseconds throughout, and we again recorded no errors. So our clock phase caching algorithm was tracking the phase changes that were happening in our lab. When we ran the same test with clock phase caching disabled, we observed loss of phase alignment within two minutes, resulting in CDR locking time degradation due to clock phase shift. In conclusion, sub nanosecond clock and data recovery time is crucial for enabling the full throughput of optical switches to be utilized. Clock phase caching simplifies the process of clock and data recovery, and this approach enables under 625 picosecond CDR locking time for data center all optical switches. If you'd like to read my journal paper that I published with Microsoft to explore some of the fuller details of this work, you can freely access it using this link. Thanks very much for listening.